that sign can't stop me because I can't read. Here I go, I'm about to freak the flow. About the Cartoon Network and things they show. We got the super adventures, tune heads, and late night. It's black and white, but everything's alright. But I'll break it down a little bit more. Tell you what they have in store with his tunes you're looking for. We got Fred Flintstone and Bonnie Rubble. Okay, so we all know the heavy hitters for kid cartoons, right? Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, Michael Mouse's Basement of Wonders, careful of that one. But when I was a kid, there was a secret fourth channel in between those three. Whenever Squirrel Boy reared its ugly head or I had just came back from school and the good stuff wasn't on yet, I would retreat to Discovery Kids. I'm a Discovery Kid. Use a bitch. It was part of the Discovery family, featuring such hits as Bravo, HGTV, and bringing up the rear we got Food Network. Where my Alton head's at? I see you. So I guess to apologize for all the boring grown-up shows they made, except you Food Network. Shoutouts to Unwrapped and Good Eats for keeping me sane during that trip to Florida. But Discovery Kids was their attempt at making a kids channel with educational cartoons. Wait, no, come back. Look, it wasn't bad. We had classics like Tunstein, Time Warp Trio, Kenny the Shark, Kenny? He's not a cat or a dog or a frog or a hog. He's something different, something special. And do you guys remember Bendy the Jungle Girl? I wonder what she's up to now. <laughs> But we're not here to talk about that stuff. No one remembers it, I bet you don't, and that you're too much of a coward to leave a comment and tell me otherwise. <coughs> Engagement, don't forget to subscribe. Nope. We are here to talk about D-Kid's attempt to pander to their incredibly robust Hot Topic viewership. Yep. Today, I'm taking my hat off to Growing Up Creepy. Middleton Middle School, an ordinary school filled with ordinary kids with all the ordinary problems of growing up. But in my case, life is anything but ordinary. You see, I was raised by bugs. Get the picture? Jokes on you, I'm into that shit! Created by Splash Entertainment, who a few of you guys might recognize more as Moonscope. Yep, the Code Lyoko and He-Man Moonscope. Growing up creepy follows the adventures of Creepy Creature. Get it? She's a young golf girl whose frank personality and deadpan demeanor makes it a little hard for her to fit in. Well, that and the fact that she was raised by bugs. Yep. Creepy was abandoned on the doorstep of a mansion that to most people would seem empty, but it was in fact full of bugs. I know we all can relate. <laughs> bugs that thankfully decided to treat Creepy as one of their own, and Razor is part of their family. However, Wanting Creepy to know her own kind, they decide to send her off to school to make friends and connect with humans. So basically every episode follows Creepy as she juggles the struggles of everyday life while dealing with her more insect-like instincts. So yeah, fun times are in store. Let's look at who we're dealing with cast-wise. Mother. Proud. Strong. Beautiful mother. See what you want, grab it, bite its head off, snap! First off, of course we have Creepy, the main character. She's kinda dark, kinda spooky, but by no means is she a bummer. She's usually down to try most things. She isn't afraid to step out of her comfort zone, and she'll do anything for her friends and family. She's an easy girl to like, even though most of the town thinks she looks scary, which is super inaccurate. I mean, look at her, she looks so cool! Her character design is one of the best parts of the show, and it's probably the only reason people still remember it. I know that's why I do. Just look at that hair, that makeup. And I remember I used to love seeing her do her little walk. And it's funny, since she was raised by bugs, she doesn't really walk. She skitters. She can be a little tone deaf though. She isn't used to human society or how most people are afraid of bugs, so sometimes she comes off as a little... Let's just say eccentric, but Creepy is super comfortable with herself. She dresses how she wants, doesn't follow trends she doesn't want to, and she's only friends with people who like her for her. Speaking of, we have Creepy's friends, Chris Alice, get it, 
like the thing. And Budge Bentley. Chris Alice is your straight up pumpkin spice latte, Pinterest using, Facebook charity raising basic girl. In fact, she was basically set up to be the bad guy of the show, but instead she finds Creepy's weirdness charming and usually tries to get Creepy to participate in things so more people will appreciate her. She also does karate, which I think is pretty cool. And then we have Budge, a large, imposing looking dude who is in reality really super sweet and nice. And bonus points for Creepy? He's super into bugs. In fact, he's one of the few people that actually know Creepy was raised by bugs. The rest of the town is basically scared straight by them, but Budge gives Creepy an outlet to talk about her family which is a perfect segue for me to talk about them myself. Man, I'm killing it today. You have Carolina, Creepy's mom and praying mantis, Vinny, her dad, and vegan mosquito. God help us, it's spreading. And her two annoying brothers, Nat, uh, well, a Nat, and Polly, a pill bug. Of course, you also have the entire rest of the house and some special relatives that appear from time to time, but that basically covers it. Creepy's family loves her like one of their own, and oftentimes you'll see their iconic family hug, which mostly reminds me of the last round on Fear Factor. We have a couple of other major players, Melanie and Carla, a group of mean girl types who are usually seen with their nose up at Creepy, a couple of teachers here and there, and Dr. Pierce, a crazy bug scientist who wants to pin Creepy's mom to a board. Do you guys remember that weird episode of Arthur where Binky goes crazy trying to catch butterflies? I mean, you're going too far, Binky. No, I'm not. I've worked hard to catch the big blue butterfly. It's mine! Mine! <laughs> well, see ya! Man, what even was that show sometimes? Regardless, Growing Up Creepy follows these characters on various adventures. Like the crew going camping and trying to discover Bugfoot, a prehistoric bug that supposedly lives there. Or going to a pumpkin patch only to find it haunted by squash beetles. And maybe something more. In fact, there were a lot of weird episodes that seemed to border on the supernatural. Like one that was about Creepy's family sending her a doll for her birthday, but it seems like the doll might be haunted. It turns out in the end that it was just her family manipulating it, but right before the credits... Fuck with the chuck! And in one episode where a new girl takes control of the school, she's revealed at the end to be some kind of crazy bee monster. Heck, Creepy even brings a dead frog back to life in one episode. Like, I swear this show has rules, I just don't know what they are. But even if it sounds like I have nothing to offer this show but praise, just wait until I get to some of the stuff that, well, bugs me. You guys know I still have this. See you after the break. Right? Cartoon Network. All right, boys. Cartoon Network. One, a two. You're up. Okay, first off, let's acknowledge the elephant beetle in the room. This show was made in Flash in 2006. We were still learning how to use it, and not everything looks like Fosters or Wakfu. But man, I wish everything looked like Wakfu. This show is janky looking. The animation is passable, but that's really all I can say about it. Besides Creepy, and a lot of the other bug designs, which I think look rather nice. I don't really like how most of the other characters look. They don't look bad per se, just kind of forgettable. You would think that with such a strong main character design, they would want to surround it with a pretty cool crew. But hey, whatever. The backgrounds kind of look nice though, in that mid-2000s Ruby Gloom kind of way. Another Flash show made in 2006. However, that one's animation aged a lot better, and it also had a cool spooky vibe. And a lot of cool character designs, why didn't I talk about Ruby Gloom? But okay, yeah, the animation is kinda bleh, and to be honest, some of the stories are a little boring too. I wanna hang out with Creepy and her cool bug family, not the extras from Pleasantville. 
And besides Creepy's main two friends, I don't really find any of the other characters that interesting. And I barely find those two interesting. The only ever human I kinda like is this kid named Tarantula Boy. A half human, half spider that Creepy takes interest in. They are super cute together. And their first episode shows them going on a date at the carnival he works at. However, sadly, Creepy discovers that his Tarantula Boy persona, it's all an act. And he's just a normal kid named Skipper. Hey everybody! This guy's a great big phony! So she decides to leave him behind, which I didn't really get. I would think that Creepy would accept him for who he really is, considering that's the freaking point of this show. Luckily, it didn't end there, since the next time we see him, him and Creepy patch things up. And Creepy even learns that he was raised by a giant spider, just like she was raised by bugs. But by now, Creepy just likes Skipper for who he is. But cool stories like this are kind of few and far between. So then, why do I like this show? I mean, it's an easy answer, dude. Nostalgia. Look, I know that sometimes nostalgia has this reputation for blinding us to the past, and making us think that older stuff was always better than the newer stuff. But, like, take a look at growing up creepy. Hey, bud. We still on for lunch? Uh, well, uh, I've, uh, <laughs> I gotta go do something. And now look at some of the stuff we have today. Yeah, it's no contest. Nostalgia can totally be dangerous. If you're too busy looking back at the past, then how are you going to see your future? But nostalgia is part of life, and you can look back on the past without living in it. I like remembering me eating cereal in my mom's bed even though she told me not to, and watching Growing Up Creepy. I like that Creepy taught people how to love their individuality, and to not be afraid of people just because of how they look. Like. Take a look at Ice Cube. That's a scary looking dude right there, but I bet he wouldn't hurt a fly. As long as that fly doesn't rep the wrong hood. And look at Suge Knight. Okay, no. You should be afraid of Suge Knight. You should all be very afraid of Suge Knight. Don't make me change you, Eric. Fuck's that supposed to mean? But most of all, I love learning about bugs, man. Bugs are cool. If you look at the top things that little boys find awesome, you have dinosaurs, ninjas, monkeys, women drawn by Bruce Timm that made us have confusing feelings, and bugs. And this show did a great job teaching kids about them, from beetles to tarantulas. So yeah, this show might not be anything special to you, but it was something special to me, and I'm sure it was special to a lot of other kids back then. It taught me about bugs, about being yourself, and it wasn't a bad way to spend half an hour, even if I was mostly just waiting for Ben 10. Also, the music was awesome. Samantha Lombardi did the theme song for it, and she also provided a lot of the background music. And it is dripping with that mid-2000s flavor that I crave. So yeah, I like it, even if it wasn't the best. Even if there were better shows I could talk about, I still like it. Because, hey, I grew up with Creepy. Kind of game.